Hi guys, welcome back for another video. With the introduction of the Impact M3, the Impact platform got introduced to a bunch of new features. Up until now, it was always possible to upgrade your current FX Impact to the stats of the specs of the currently released one. Even if you owned the very first one released in 2016, which is the one that turned the Argon world upside down and is still a benchmark for innovation and accuracy in the Argon world. Innovation came a long way in the Argon industry with changes every year bringing us a bunch of new uh, cool features and items. But for some features to keep being innovative and an example for all the rest, they have to undergo some dramatic changes. And that's no different for the Impact M3. And so sadly, this time it's not 100% possible to install all the upgrades the M3 has got onto an older existing Impact. Some parts require such a change that it's impossible to make them fit on a design of 5 or 6 years ago. In my opinion, it was already brilliant, they have made upgrades possible up until now and I don't think there is any Argon out there just like it. But all this, and very important, it doesn't mean that your Impact Mark II, like mine right here, is less capable or outdated. I don't know if you know, but Keith Gibson from 68 Whiskey won the RMAC competition this year with his Mark II and going home with the big prize money. Well done, Keith. So, as you can see, I haven't sold my Mark II yet, as I still love and enjoy shooting it quite a bit. In this video, I'll be installing any possible M3 accessory onto the Mark II and I'll also be pointing out the ones that you can change and maybe if there is an alternative to it. So we have lots of work ahead of us, especially if I want to install the 720 Plenum, I will have to completely disassemble the impact. So I'll put some timestamps in the screen for you so you can jump ahead in time if you want to see one of the several parts being installed. So enough talking, let's get started. So before we start doing any work on our gun, always make sure it's not cocked, there are no pellets in the breech and your gun is put on safe. Safety first, so a safe gun to work on is very important. First thing I will do in this assembling is remove my uh, helix scope with these nice Eculite rings from Element Optics. Like this. Next I will remove my uh, barrel. Release the screw here on the end, pull out your barrel. I'm going to go quite quickly through the disassembly. If there's any uh, detail I forget, I made some uh, different videos installing another power plenum, taking some apart, putting them back together. So reference to those videos if you're missing some kind of a detail. But of course, you can also hit me up in the comment section down below with a question and I will try to answer it as good as I can. Remove your bottle. Remember, you still have some air in your plenum as it reads right here. Take a two and a half millimeter Allen. And what I like to do is to crack the regulator just a little bit. Like this and let it bleed out. Once it completely bleed out and we have confirmed our gauge at the back it reads zero, I'll put it on a bipod to continue like this. Then first I'll remove the cheek piece or the cheek riser, no, no riser, cheek piece with the four screws you have here on top. Just release all four of them. Keep your screws in the same location they came from so you know afterwards which one goes where. Then we will focus our attention to the Picatinny rail or the scope rail. Two screws at the back. I 
and one bigger one here in the front. Make sure you release the screws all the way in order to lift it up. Like this. At this point we can go ahead, take our valve adjustment knob out, just turn it all the way out. Like this with the screw. Take an 11 millimeter box wrench. It shouldn't be too tight. Screw it out just like this and keep both parts to the side for later. Then we'll focus our attention to the top rail and release all the screws to take that rail off or top plate off. Also two and a half millimeter. And take them all out. I will speed up the video a little bit to keep the length of the video a little bit down. Then with all the screws loose, just simply lift it up. Keep all your screws in the exact location they came from as they have a different length and they will have to go back exactly in the same orientation. With that done, I have the uh, dual side cocking lever by Sabre Tactical. The front block that sits right here, we can also put to the side for a second. But in order to release the cocking block together with the linkage arm, I have to undo a small screw here on the side, two and a half millimeter as well. Pull out that pin, take it out just like this, slide the cocking block backwards and lift it up. Put it to the side, we'll address that later when we replace this block with the one from the M3. With that done, in order to install the M3 block, we'll also uh, remove this block. That's the one from the Sabre Tactical dual cocking arm. Same here, simply unscrew it. Lift it up just like this. Make sure you keep this pin, put it to the side or leave it in the gun just as you wish. Then we will continue and put our attention to remove all the uh, internals. You can pull on the C3 or C1, I don't remember exactly the name. Slide it forward just like this. And in some cases this will be uh, locked tied in. Mine is locked tied in because I did it myself, I remember. So what I usually do is take some vice grips, put it on, make sure they're tight enough. A little bit too much. Like this. Then I have my handy uh, torch here to heat it up so the blue Loctite can uh, melt a little bit. So I'll start heating it up. I see some smoke coming off so I think that should be enough. Then you see that small hole here. I take a tiny Allen key and together with my uh, vice grip, I can easily stick it in that little hole and start undoing it. I know there are some uh, removal tools on the internet that do the same thing, but since that hole is there, I can just do it like this. Now be careful, that part has been heated up and as you can see the glue is still smoking. Put it safely to the side as we'll be needing it later on.
release our clamp. Okay, and at this point we can slide out the hammer, the hammer weight, and where is the spring? Let's take an Allen key and the hammer spring. Put them all safely to the side, just like this, together with your other parts. And at this point in time, I'll quickly take the bipod off. We can separate the front and the back half, so take a bigger Allen key, I think it's a 5mm. Undo the Allen you see there, and then gently slide out the back part, making sure not to damage or to bend your valve rod. This part can go to the side for a second. And then now we'll address the back end. First of all, we have to remove that gauge. Let's see if I can take the cover of the gauge or maybe just unscrew it by hand. Remember those gauges don't have to be super tight as they should uh, seal their, themselves on that X O-ring you see there. So gauge is off. Then we'll have to remove that uh, bottom plate you see here. Let's remove the buttstock just for a second. Like this. Then we'll go ahead, remove all the screws on the magazine adapter plate. Once all your screws are loose, one very important thing, underneath the lever here, there is a small spring. Make sure you don't lose that spring. Put it safely to the side with your screws. Now uh, seeing this, I forgot, I don't have to remove those screws, so you can put them back in before you continue the rest. And then we can go ahead, release that big screw you see here. It's also an M5, that's what keeps the plenum in. Crack it open. I take mine completely out and you will see afterwards when we replace it with the other one, why? And then you can just take your valve assembly out. Put that block with the screw safely to the side. And your previous plenum is out. And that concludes the complete disassembly of the Impact Mark II. And now we can go ahead, reassemble everything with the 720 Planum. And then here we have the 720 Power Planum Kit, part number 2603. And let's see what we get inside. First of all, the 720 Planum. It doesn't run away. You also get another hammer spring, hammer weight, and uh, the hammer itself, a valve return spring I see. You get the valve housing, the M3 uh, valve knob, which is also updated um, compared to the Mark II, the part that goes into your impact. And a brand new valve rod to go again uh, to go together with the valve assembly. So let me clean up the table and let's put everything back together. So first thing we gotta do is assemble the power plenum of course. Something you always need on hand is some loop, not glue, because some people hear my accent and think I mean glue instead of loop, but this is loop. This is some loop from Yuma Air, it's a low viscosity silicone loop specially designed for o-rings and regulator maintenance. So take your plenum part. On one side at the bottom you see this tiny uh, grub screw. 
that grub screw I will take out just for now. Whoops. Make sure you don't lose it as it's very tiny. The reason why I take it out is for alignment reasons and I'll show you why. Because that part of the grub screw has to fit in to that divot you see here, just like this, to make sure it's in the perfect orientation. So what I do is I loop the o-rings first a little bit. Making sure the o-rings go in smoothly and they don't catch on anything. Like this. The part with the transfer hole goes in first. Just stick it in like this. Guide it through. As you see, it's like this. Make sure it goes smooth and you don't uh, ruin the o-rings. Like so. The transfer port hole also aligns with this hole here. So make sure you align it a little bit. I see I made a mistake and oh yes, even I can make a mistake. Don't kill me for this. As you can see, this part has to be on top and not on the bottom. I just had it mixed around. No worries. Just turn it around just like this. Make sure it sits all the way. Screw in the grub screw. Wiggle a little bit, and make sure you're in the right position. That's why I was so difficult to feel it before. Like so, and this is the correct orientation. Then, take your valve uh, rod to say like this. Also put a little bit of lubrication on that end o-ring because it plays a very important role. I like to loop the whole rod just a little bit to help it guide through all the o-rings. This part sits inside just like this with a tiny o-ring sealing here on the back. Just like this. Always inspect your o-rings before installing everything that could make your life a hell of a lot easier. Then this part, we have a one big fat o-ring inside. You also have some o-rings, but those are already installed from the factory. Two o-rings at the front. So I loop this o-ring as well. Together with those two o-rings you see here. Now I've heard stories from people that this part was too thick and it was not fitting into the back of their impact. Now I heard this or I uh, notified this to FX and they are aware of this problem. If you're encountering this problem while installing the power plenum, go to the support channel uh, or support web page and uh, explain your problem. They have a, a different part for people who experience this problem and they will send one out straight to you. Then at this point we have to guide it through, making sure we're not damaging the o-rings like this. What I like to do is I like to pull the valve backwards and I will explain in, in a second why. As you can see the line through the power plenum is uh, not in the middle and if you put your valve all the way to the back and you start screwing it in your valve will, or your valve rod will have to flex a little bit and that's not very healthy for the valve rod. So make sure the threads go in nicely and smooth, they're not cross threading. There's quite a lot of threads. My hands are greasy but it will have to work out. Very important that this part sit flush with the body, so still a little bit more. Just a little bit more. 
Now, this is the max way it can go in. It's flush with the body, but as you can see, it's not quite in alignment. The little divot you see here has to be completely on top, in line with the flat spot you see there. So let's turn it a little bit backwards. Greasy hands don't make it easy. That's more or less it. And once we install it into the back part or the action part of the impact, it will be fine. Right. Take the rear block, that screw that I was taking completely out for a reason, just like this. The O-rings should still be lubricated. If not, put a bit of loop on them. Gently guide it in, gently I said. Make sure you locate the flat spot here at the back, where that screw seals on, which also puts your alignment straight. You can more or less guide it already with where the grab screw is to have it more or less in line. Take your Allen key, just screw it down till you feel it touching. Wiggle it just a little bit to make sure you are where it has to be. And then you can tighten it up. Make sure you push it forward all the way. Like this. Perfect. Next. Next up, you have the back part. Make sure that spring is still in place. Be very careful with it. Just on top like this. Take the four screws. Best thing is to start them one by one. So the threads are nicely starting. You're not binding up on anything. Once it all tightened up, remember nothing has to be gorilla tight and ruin any threads. Those screws are very fine threads and nothing has to be gorilla tight. Like this, once everything is tight, make sure the spring action on your magazine catch still works. Take your gauge. Make sure everything looks fine. Screw it back on. I know I can just put it on like this by hand. The orientation I like and it will seal properly. Give everything a good wipe with the greasy fingers. And we can go ahead and replace the front part. Then we have our, back, our front part again. I'll quickly loop those o-rings again, making sure they can go in smoothly. Like so. Also make sure there is still some loop here on that part. There are no sharp edges that can cut your o-rings. Gently guide your valve rod in. Make sure you're not bending anything. One quick thing to note, you see that divot here on top of that uh, pipe, let's say, that will have to sit in between the groove here for an alignment. So then gently guide them in, that's one, 
that too i said gently but okay make sure the divot is in the middle and then i will just snug it up just a little bit so that divot stays there in the middle and at this point we can turn and align everything once we put the top plate on Next, I will uh, put it back on the bipod to insert the internals. As you can see, everything still moves, flexes, so be very gentle with your impact doing all this. So, gently pull out that valve rod, just a little bit, like this. Supplied in your kit, you get some new internals, some very greasy bags which is not bad. Take the heavy spring as this is your hammer spring. Take your hammer weight and your hammer. The spring and your hammer weight on top of your hammer. Everything is nice and greasy. That's good. And gently slide it in just like this. Then take my vice grips, clamp them on, and I gently start winding it on first by hand to make sure the threads start nicely. And then, on which I can use my Allen key to keep threading it on. Now, as you may know already, the amount of distance that this sits inside is very crucial and it has to be between six and six and a half millimeters. So let's already go ahead and measure it once to see where we are at the moment. Gently slide it into the back. Make sure it sits all the way on the end here. I have a nice ruler with millimeters and a half millimeters. And as you can see, we're now at uh, one centimeter, which is still way too much. So let's keep threading it in a little bit more. Eight millimeters. Make it see it all the way back. Six and a half, spot on. Then with the internals in, we can take our new valve adjuster and your valve return spring. Like this. Simply screw off the knob. Put it on here in the front. Take the 11 millimeter box wrench, snug it up, doesn't have to be really tight. Put in your valve return spring, make sure it seats nicely inside. Put your valve knob on and screw it on. For now, I'll screw it on to number four. Or even maybe number three. Just like this. Next up, let's focus ourselves to the cocking handle. And here we have it. 
the FX Impact M3 dual side lever kit. Uh, part number is 2602, the other one was 2603 I believe. So what do you get inside? A new barrel guide. Let's quickly have a look at it. There's a new one you can find on the M3. Where the previous one looks like this. The guidance is maybe a little bit bigger. I have noticed two slots on the side of the new one. Maybe that indicates an accessory that will come out soon or something. But that's a new barrel guide for you. What else do you get? Is the uh, new M3 cocking block with that uh, piston that gives that nice feel when you open and close your cocking lever. You also get the second part that will have to be screwed onto the impact. Cool. You get the tiny grub screws and pins to get uh, the cocking lever installed. And last but not least, you have the new short throw cocking lever to be installed. Right, let me clean up the table and have it installed. Before we continue, we have to recuperate our uh, guide with our pellet probe holder. And in my case, I can just simply twist it off like this. Now, the length of this rod, I've said it in multiple videos, it's very crucial, but we'll uh, cover this in a few minutes when we install everything. Take the new one and it simply screws on just like this. Maybe I will put some blue Loctite on this to make sure it doesn't move when I'm uh, handling the gun. But that's as far as, as it will go inside. If I turn too much, it's gonna turn here. So let's see when we install it, what the correct depth should be. First thing I'll do is take that new barrel guide that comes with it, put it in the front. I took the two screws from the top plate just to secure it just for a minute. So I can align everything. Like this. Then we'll install the new back block here. I will salvage the, the screw from the older cocking block. Put the screw through, make sure you align it. Just gently snug it up, it doesn't have to be really tight yet, as we still want to maneuver it a little bit when we put the barrel through. From the old cocking block by just unscrewing it, screwing the new one on. The exact length of this is very crucial, but we'll uh, take a look at this in a minute. As you see, I have marked a red line on my uh, pellet probe, and I'll show you why I've done this. Where's my barrel? That line is the exact seating depth I need for my uh, Yuma uh, dual flow pellet probe there to align perfectly with the hole of the slug opening, giving me maximum amount of airflow. So this is my guide in order to set the length of this valve rod, uh, this uh, cocking rod. So we screw it in. Like this. Slide it in from the back first to the front. Make sure this hook here sits in front of your hammer so when you cock the gun it pulls the hammer weight back. Take your new short throw cocking lever and the bag with the supplied pins. By now you know that this uh, cocking block from the M3 
is ambidextrous so you can mount it left or right just as you want but since I'm right-handed I'll install it now on the right side for speed shooters it could also be very handy mounting it to the left side so the first thing you do guide it in try to align the holes a little bit push that pin in and do exactly the same to the front one let me like this this gives me an indication now because the the barrel is not in this will flip a bit to the side so let's take my barrel Gently guide it through all the parts it's a little bit tolerances are a little bit more tight than it was with the original parts of the mark II as a, they've changed the tolerances a little bit so maybe I'll put take my shrine on for a second which is good sliding it to the back Push it in all the way. Put your cocking handle forward. And now you can see I'm still out about one millimeter. So adjusting this rod could help me getting a, a better alignment or a better seat for your pellet probe. Right, and so as you can see, my red line now is exactly together with the, the inlet of my barrel, which tells me that my alignment of my pellet probe over the transfer port hole is perfect. Also, when I cock the rifle, just be careful when doing this when everything is disassembled, you have to make sure that your pellet probe still clears so your magazine can go in without any interference. Quickly uncock it like this at this point we also have the barrel through the barrel keeps all the the parts because you have a, a junction here which keeps all the parts nicely aligned or at least in this plane orientation so we can put our top plate on but before we took put our top plate back on let's make this one tight Remove the two screws again from the front. Like this. Before I take the top plate, I put the top plate back on. I put a little bit of grease on that guide here to give me smooth cocking I'm not going to put too much as there is still quite some in the rail itself take the top plate put it on like so put the two front ones back two and a half millimeter no yes it is then make sure you start all the threads before tightening everything up this way you know that the, the orientation between front and back is correct so you don't get any cross threadings or parts that misalign or stuff like that
like this with all the screws tightened up. Something very important we're not allowed to forget is to put the two tiny grub screws into the cocking handle here. So let's take them out. They're very tiny, so make sure you don't lose them. But they're there to keep those pins from backing out when shooting. So simply screw them in till they touch. You don't have to force them, otherwise you force the pins downwards and it's difficult to get them back out. Like this. You see the two tiny grub screws there, keeping it from backing out those pins. Next up, buttstock cheek rest. But it's not very simple. Just slide it in between. Like this. Screw back in. Cheek rest. Simply tighten those four screws up. Two and a half millimeter. This. At this point you can also test your cocking cycle, see if everything works perfect. Super. Put our uh, scope rail back on. Same here, align the screws, start them first. I start with tightening the front one then and then the two at the back. All right. So we have successfully installed our uh, power plan, our 720 power plan. We have installed the cocking block of the M3 and there are still some other parts we can still do. For instance, we can install a uh, carbon fiber liner sleeve like I have here, perfect to go together with that kit. And I also have a harmonic barrel tuner that will be installing on this one. First thing I will do, undo the nut at the front, 10 millimeter, screw it out, pull out the liner, and as you can see, this one still has my old trick with the electrical tape and uh, the O-rings that are kept holding in place by the electrical tape. But this is all into the past now with this carbon fiber liner sleeve. Always make sure there are no O-rings left behind as this can uh, cause a number of uh, problems down the road. Then let me quickly remove my electrical tape from my uh, liner. With the tape removed, simply slide the carbon fiber liner over it. Very snug fit, just like this. Then to insert it, always make sure you insert it the correct way with the groove through the breech end. Slide nicely in without play. Make sure it seats nicely all the way to the back put your locking nut back on ten millimeter and just snug it up doesn't have to be super tight like this then we have our uh, harmonic barrel tuner 
with my greasy hands, just wiping it off. At the moment, this is the 22 caliber uh, end and uh, the current impact is 25. So let me quickly take this part out by just unscrewing it like this. Taking the correct part for 25 caliber. Screwing it in just like this. With an Allen key, tighten it up. And just push it over the barrel. It can be quite tight as there are some dampening o-rings inside like this and at this point we can take off the bipod And before I forget, tighten up your barrel locking screw, like this. And we're about time to put our bottle back on. So this is a 480cc bottle. Previously I had a 580cc bottle on, on it, but with a 580cc bottle the harmonic barrel tuner touches the bottle and then in this configuration it's not possible so we'll be swapping back to the 480 cc also had some questions from people uh, asking assistance because when they put their bottle on they start leaking air through the barrel and a quick fix for this sometimes can be just by cocking your impact put it on safe and then screw on your bottle And I don't hear any leaks, so it sounds like everything is very successful. Put it on fire, hold your cocking lever back, simply uncock it. And then one last final item we can upgrade is the power wheel to the 16 step power wheel like the M3S. So let's turn it around. Always have to be very careful, there is a small ball bearing behind this, so we don't lose it. Make sure I get the right Allen key, I think it's a 2mm. Yes it is. Unscrew it, press it down with your fingers. Take out the screw, gently lift off. And as you can see, there is this little ball bearing. Simply take the new one. I will also take, are the screws the same? Let's have a quick look. They are the same. I will use the old one as there is a little bit of Loctite on it. Same here. I'll put a little bit of a loop on it. So it has a nice smooth click. Doesn't have to be too much, just a little bit to help with the friction. Wipe off a little bit of the excess. We took our wheel off at 60 at max, so we'll put this one on at number 16. Like this, push down on it. Insert the screw. Make sure it clicks. I'm doing perfect. Going all the way around. Perfect. And so we are here almost at the end of the video. Let's have a quick rundown of the Mark II 
and the items we have upgraded with the parts of the Mark III. Starting at the back, when you get yourself a standard uh, impact, you get the same buttstock that's already on the Mark II as well. Cheekpiece is exactly the same. You get also the high capacity magazine already from the Mark II, so there's no change there. Um, the gauges, of course, I could have upgraded them to the Wicca gauges like the M3 has, but I know my gauges are pretty good. The back one is pod on and the front one is off by about five to 10 bar. But this I know and I can adjust myself to it. The biggest elephant in the room, we have upgraded to the Planum 720 successfully without any issues. Remember if um, the, the, the pin here or the tube is too big to get into your impact, contact the support center of FX and they will send you out a new one that does fit your part. The major next big thing is the cocking arm like you have on the M3. Ambidextrous one, very easy with that nice little pin here on the front giving you that satisfying click when opening and closing it. So this was able to be upgraded as well. The scope rail on top, my Impact Mark II, already came with twin 20 MOA built into the rail and the M3 has exactly the same. So the gauge, Wicca, could be have done, but I uh, kept myself to the original one. Trigger, the M3 trigger is just that slightly little bit different, but if you're not used to uh, the M3 trigger, you won't notice it. Uh, the difference with the Mark II, because both triggers are ex exceptionally phenomenal. We have uh, the 600 millimeter inside here. We um, put a carbon fiber liner sleeve on top of it, just like in the Impact M3. We have the harmonic barrel tuner. Both of them are an option, but I've also installed it on my Mark II. So it's exactly identical to a Mark III, if you want. The valve knob is also upgraded to the one like the Mark III with the a valve return spring inside, the hammer, the weight, the hammer spring, all the same like in a normal M3. One big difference between this and what we can't upgrade is the dual bottle regulator like the M3 has sitting in the bottle adapter here. It's not possible to be done on the Mark II as the thread connections into the block is different. But there are companies like Yuma Air that have a piece that sits in between with an extra regulator if you do want to get yourself a dual regulator set up. That's it for this side, so let's quickly turn it around. Another big upgrade the Mark III got was that quick tune system. That quick tune system is actually phenomenal, but in theory it does exactly the same like you have on your Mark II. We upgraded the power wheel to the 16 click, so you get those half clicks in between to uh, really dial in your velocity and your tune. The quick tune system has this little wheel here on the side, I admit it's a lot uh, better than what we have on the Mark II, but in basics or in theory, it does exactly the same. So what you can achieve with uh, the M3, you can do as well with the Mark II. And that's about it, guys. That's my upgrade with all the possible accessories the M3 got onto the M2 or the Mark II. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, always feel free to contact me and I will try to help you out. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye.